everyone. Um, so we're going to continue with differentiation rules here today, and we're going to start with the product and quotient rule. Actually, I think today is mostly just product and quotient rule. Um, and so what I told you yesterday was that when we do derivatives of things that are being added and subtracted, it's really easy. You can just take the derivative of the individual pieces and add them together. Um, it's more complicated for multiplying and dividing functions. Um, and sometimes we can get around that. So like using this same example here, I could get around this problem by just foiling this out and then using kind of the methods we've been doing. But we are definitely going to run into some like this guy down here, this very last one, where there's no amount of simplifying that is going to turn this into something that I can actually work with. So um, we have to use these sometimes, okay? So um, let's start here with the product rule. And I've got these printed here. I'm not sure if they're printed on your notes page, so if you need to pause the video to copy them down, please do. So the product rule, you'll see, says that if I'm taking the derivative of two things multiplied together, so the u and the v represent like two separate functions. Um, if I'm taking the derivative of two things multiplied together, the pattern I'm going to take is u prime v plus u v prime. Um, actually, I, I usually end up saying this, u prime v plus v prime u. You'll notice all I did was switch the order of those two things. Um, but that kind of fits better with what the quotient rule says. Like, it's easier to remember that way. This is something, by the way, that you will want to memorize. We're going to do it a lot. So um, you'll want to make sure you get to know it real well. And I think before I go on to, like, the crazy-looking quotient rule, let's just go down and do the first couple of examples here that use the product rule. So like I said with this first one, um, we could get away with foiling and then not having to worry about the product rule. But I want to do this with the product rule. Um, so you can see how it works. So this is my u and this is my v. Okay, these are my two expressions. So when I say I'm going to find u prime, that's the derivative of u. And so if I asked you for the derivative of x squared plus 1, you would tell me, well, x squared is 2x. And then the 1 just falls away because the derivative is 0. And then v prime, derivative over here, would be 3x squared. And again, the 3 falls away. Okay, so I'm going to set up, um, I guess I'll write this here, u prime v plus v prime u. So u prime is 2x. This, by the way, is my derivative, so I should label it this way. Uh, u prime is 2x. And I'm going to multiply by v, which is x cubed plus 3. plus v prime, which is 3x squared, and then u, which is x squared plus 1. Okay. Now, I will tell you that um, in AP land, we are way less concerned with simplifying than you probably ever have been in any of your math classes before. Um, we almost always worry about simplifying. But here, if you just left your answer like that, actually, it would be okay. However, if it were a multiple choice question or sometimes, like, if you need to go further with this answer and you need an easier version, um, we will want it to be simplified. So I'm going to go through and simplify this real quick. Plus, I'm going to use it to prove a point here in a second. So I'm going to go 2x times x cubed is 2x to the fourth. And then 2x times 3 is 6x plus 3x squared times x squared is 3x to the fourth. And then 3x squared times 1 is 3x squared. And if I clean that all up and put my like terms together, let's see, I have a 2x to the fourth and a 3x to the fourth, so that's going to make a 5x to the fourth. And then a 3x squared and then a 6x. Okay. So I told you that I'm not really going to prove to you um, how the product rule came to be. Um, that's, a, that's a much higher level thing. Um, if you are interested, I could certainly look up a proof and talk through it with you. Um, but I do at least want to, to make you believe me. I want to make you see that this, this is a true thing that works here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this statement and foil it. 
Okay, so I'm going to take x squared plus 1 and x cubed plus 3. And I'm going to find the derivative kind of the way we were doing it yesterday, and we're just going to confirm that it comes out the same. So this works out to be x to the fifth power. And then I get a 3x squared here, and then a 1x cubed, and then a 3. Okay. Um, I'm going to take my derivative, so now I'm going to say y prime is, this one here would be 5x to the fourth. This next one would be 6x, and this guy would be 3x squared. And then nobody cares about the poor 3 at the end. And let's just check it against what we had. It came out in a different order because I didn't bother to put these in the right order. But we have the same pieces, right? And so that's me just kind of confirming for you that this product rule does, in fact, get us to a derivative, okay? So this next example is one that we actually worked with yesterday, okay? Um, and I made you multiply this together. The multiplication was a little bit messy. So let's try it again using the product rule. So this is my u, this is my v, and I want to just remind you that this could be written as x to the power of 7 over 2, and this could be written as 4x to the negative 1 power. So let's find our u prime. Okay, so I'm going to multiply by 7 over 2, and then subtract 1, which is really 2 over 2, so this is going to become 5 over 2. Um, my v prime then will be negative 1 times 4 is negative 4, and then this would be x to the negative 2. And I'm just going to leave it in those weird, you know, negative fraction or negative exponents and all that right now. Um, let's go find our derivative. So I'm going with u prime first, so I'm going to go 7 over 2, x to the power of 5 over 2. Um, times v, which is 4 over x. Um, I might write this as 4x to the negative 1. Like, I'm going to write it in this form here. That just might make it easier for simplifying here in a second. And then plus um, v prime, which is negative 4x squared. So actually, I'm going to go, that is supposed to be, well, I guess just to not confuse anybody. We'll leave that as a plus for right now but it's plus a negative 4x to the negative 2 times u, which is x to the 7 halves. Okay, so once again, you technically would be allowed to just leave that and walk away. Um, I usually try to simplify if we can, um, just for the sake of like getting used to that process for the multiple choice section, um, but like this answer would be okay as a derivative. Um, if you had to go plug something in for x, this might be kind of a pain, but. So, okay, to multiply these two things together, I'm gonna go seven over two times four. So I'm going seven times four is 28 divided by two. So that's 14. And then when you multiply powers, you add the exponent. So I'm going five over two plus negative one which is really 5 over 2 minus 1, so that makes an x to the 3 over 2. Okay. And then here, I'm going to use, a. I struggled with this a second ago, but this is plus a negative, so I'm going to say minus 4. And then I'm doing negative 2 plus 7 over 2. Okay. Um, so negative 2 plus 7 over 2, let's see, that's negative 4 over 2 plus 7 over 2, so that'd be 3 over 2. And hey, look, they both worked out to be 3 over 2s, right? So now I can combine them like like terms, and I can just say, well, 14 minus 4 is 10, and this is 10x to the 3 over 2, which if you went back and looked at um, this problem when we did it yesterday, this is the last one in your notes from yesterday, that is the answer that we got, okay? So it's up to you what you like better. If you were okay with multiplying those together to begin with, and if you'd rather do that, go for it. If you like the product rule better, and you're going to get a lot better at the product rule over time, um, you're welcome to do that too. 
Okay, so now let's talk about the quotient rule. Quotient is when we're dividing functions. And the notation works the same way. U and V are the two things that we're dividing. You'll notice this quotient rule is a little more complicated. Um, so the top actually looks really similar to the product rule. It's U prime V, except it's minus V prime U. Um, but then we also tack on to this divided by V squared. So that's just whatever is on the denominator before, we take that thing and square it downstairs. Um, I will tell you there's not a ton of simplifying that I do with these answers because they come out kind of messy. Um, so I usually just sort of leave them be unless I see some kind of what I refer to as low hanging fruit. If there's something that I, I feel like, oh yeah, that's really easy to simplify, I'll do it. Um, Okay, so looking at this example here, this is u and this is v, okay? And actually these are the same expressions from up here, but this is multiplication, now we're doing division. Um, and by the way, there is no way to simplify this thing. Um, our only shot would have been if we could have factored and gotten some things to cancel out, but there's no factoring that can happen here. We're not allowed to just go in here and start crossing off x's. Um, so our, our only shot at this one is to do um, quotient rule. So u prime, derivative of the top, that's just going to be 2x. v prime is derivative of the bottom, which is going to be 3x squared. And again, we kind of talked about that up here. Same idea. And so when I'm writing my overall derivative, I'm doing u prime times v, so 2x times v, which is x cubed plus 3. If you want, maybe pause the video and try setting this up yourself, um, and then check yourself with me. You know, that way you can, you can be trying it too. Minus v prime, which is 3x squared, times u, which is x squared plus 1. And then all of this is over my v expression, x cubed plus 3, and then that to the power of 2. Okay, so once again here, I could go through and distribute the 2x, and I could distribute the 3x squared. Down here I would have to FOIL, um, and sometimes I'll do that. I mean, and if it's a multiple choice question, it's possible that you would have to do some of that for sure. but. With this division, unless something on the top match something on the bottom like exactly, like the entire expression, we're not going to be able to do any sort of like canceling up and down. And so the chances of this actually cleaning up a whole lot, you know, the, the chances of it actually simplifying um, other than just getting rid of some parentheses is not real huge. So that is just my derivative expression. I'm just going to leave that there. Okay, it's gross, but that is my derivative. And if I needed to know, you know, what is the derivative at the, of this expression at x equals 5, I would just kind of trot along here and drop 5s in for all my x's and then do that calculation. Okay, so one more here to work with. And I, I want to point out here when I need the quotient rule and when I don't. So this here, this is just a plain old power, right? My power is the 2 thirds, okay? So no quotient rule involved. This, this is a, a pro, uh, I'm sorry, a power divided by a number, by a constant. That's not a quotient rule situation because we could just take this thing and rewrite it as one half x to the fifth power. Okay, I guess it would be a minus one half x to the fifth power. Um, no quotient rule needed there because this is just a plain old power with a coefficient in front. So if it's just a number on the bottom, you can usually rewrite it this way and not have to worry about quotient rule. But this over here where we've got x's living on top and bottom, this is where we're going to need our quotient rule. So this is u and this is v. Um, u prime then is 6x. Maybe pause the video and see if you can figure out what v prime would be v prime is 4x cubed plus 21x squared. And then we don't care about the 5. So now, f prime of x equals, let's start here, 
I'm going to do 2 thirds times 6. So again, mental math wise, I'm going 2 times 6 is 12 divided by 3 is 4. So 4x and then 2 thirds minus 1. That's like 2 thirds minus 3 thirds. So that's going to be a negative 1 third. Okay. Um, here with this term, I'm doing 5 times negative 1 half. So I'm just going to say negative 5 over 2. If you said, you know, 2.5 or something like that, that's fine. And then that would be x to the fourth power. Plus, and now is when I'm going to set up this big fraction here, u prime v, oh, i got to squeeze all this in here, x to the fourth plus, oh, I don't like how this is going to lay out. Um, oh, the power of movie magic here. Okay, so u prime was 6x and then times v, which is x to the fourth plus 7x cubed plus 5 minus v prime. Ah, it's still not going to fit. 4x cubed plus 21x squared times u, which is just 3x squared. I might actually cram that in front of here. 3x squared should go right there. Um, and all of that, nope, sorry, not all of that, just this piece. All of this would be over v, which is x to the fourth plus 7x cubed plus 5 squared. Okay, so think about the, the monstrous simplifying that would have to happen here. These things are fine. I mean, I might take this negative exponent and move it to the bottom of a fraction, but that's fine but I would have to distribute and distribute. <coughs> Here I would have to do some really massive FOIL. I mean, it's not even really FOIL, it's just big multiplication. And that's not gonna get me anywhere other than just a really long expression. Um, it would have like nine pieces to it. So um, we're not gonna bother. That's just my derivative, this big crazy thing. That's my derivative expression. Um, so the quotient rules can get kind of long and complicated um, take a second if you're not sure where all those pieces came from. I would pause the video and kind of rework it yourself and then maybe rewind and see if um, you can make it make sense to yourself. But that's how the product and the quotient rule are going to work. Okay, let's squeeze one more example into this video and then I'll probably do the rest in a second video. Um, this is where we're kind of starting to pull things together. Write an equation for the tangent line at x equals one half. Okay. As soon as we see tangent line, this is where your brain is going, point and slope. Those are the two things I need. Okay, the point, I have half a point, right? I have one half, okay? And then, and actually I might, I might kind of color code this here. Let's see. Um, to find the, the y value, what I'm going to do is plug this one half into this function. So I'm going to say f of one half, well that would be one over one half. And when you divide by a fraction, you really do a reciprocal, so one divided by one half is equal to two. If you don't believe me, write it all out using division of fractions or use your calculator, but I promise you it's two. So the, the coordinate we're working with is one half comma two, okay? And then I need a slope. Well, slopes come from derivatives, right? So I'm going to say, what is f prime of x? So derivative of 1 over x. Remember, we could write that as x to the negative 1 power. So I'm going to say my derivative is negative 1x to the negative 2 power, otherwise known as negative 1 over x squared. And then what I want is what is the specific slope at one half? So I want to know what is f prime of one half. And so that's going to be negative one over one half squared. Okay, one half squared is one fourth, so that's negative one over one fourth. And then remember what we did a second ago when we had a, a number over a fraction is that just flips the fraction over. So this is actually just equal to negative four. 
So my slope is negative four. Nope, negative four, sorry. Okay, so my equation for my tangent line, my actual answer to this question, y minus y1 equals m and then x minus x1. And that's it. That's your answer. Okay? So that's kind of pulling all of the pieces together. That's showing you what's the purpose of finding that derivative. Um, if I had my camera set up differently, I would pull up Desmos and show this to you. But if you were to graph 1 over x and then graph this line, you would see this line is tangent at x equals 1 half. Okay, um, I'm going to pick up the rest with a second video. If you wanted to go into, if you wanted to wait before you start the second video and, you know, go try some of your homework examples, get used to this process, and then come back to the last couple of examples, you're welcome to do that. But do just make sure that you revisit those last examples at some point.